Hey everybody and welcome to another review for the One Piece anime. I find it miraculous that the staff has managed to deliver such quality on these episodes despite Film Red being in production and taking a big portion of the staff. This episode adapts the awaited moment between Luffy and Kaido with Koyama taking control, so we're in for a lot to talk about. Now let's get into it. I think the intent of this whole episode is to take Luffy's journey with his strength growth and present it in an impactful, climactic way. Koyama's episodes will always be dramatic, it won't be just action. So that's the main intent of the artistic approaches in this episode. Koyama fully directed and storyboarded the episode and this episode is a prime example why I enjoy his episode compared to a lot of other directors. He always tries new things and his episodes are very experimental. They are very controversial because of that, especially considering the obsession fans have with accuracy to the manga. This episode is the exact opposite of the previous one. You either handle pacing by stretching, still shots and other similar aspects and stick too much to the source with such low page count or you forget the rules and go all out, which is the case for most Koyam episodes and the recent Nakamura episode also. I have to say that the first half of the episode was much better than I expected, easily elevated the source material in every single way, adding more personal fuel between Big Mom and Kid, a matchup I found weird considering the build up between Kid and Kaido. This episode makes it more natural. Koyama's pattern of using silhouettes and unique backgrounds effectively is all over the episode. Big Mom's attack was too deadly and destructive, not only having bombastic animation by Kohei Hirota, who came back from episode 1K26, but also has unique touches such as the black as using the kanji for the technique. The effects are incredible. A cool transition to the Nami scene, the comedy was on point and I'm surprised such a scene got a standout sequence in terms of animation. I liked the art style, I think Kazuya Hisara being the animation director not only provided proficient corrections but also allowed creative freedom with the animators by not being too strict with his corrections. Which is something Koyama's episodes always suffered a lot from back when Shimanuki was the animation director for most episodes offering very stiff corrections. We continue the cool transitions to Kid and this episode gave his character justice by adding such character defining moments. Kid not giving up to Kaido is something that puts into perspective the difference between the top supernovas and the one without such brave mentality. The colors and the compositing were really good in the scene and the dialogue from both Kid and Killer were badass. When it's Killer's turn to shine the color changes and he slices the screen giving each character a different flavor in their standout moments. We get to the rooftop and it recaps what already happened in the first bit which is something I'm not a fan of but Koyama's direction and storyboard here gave Kaido a terrifying and bloodthirsty vibe. Even though it did damage to the art it's an intentional scene that Koyama doesn't hold back on. I still would have preferred if it was more tame to see the details on the art because the expressions seem to be good. We get some amazing impact frames too. The atmosphere in the rooftop is special from Luffy's realization to the wind blowing as it aims for Kaido without any soundtrack. With this next sequence, Koyama proves further that he'd be a good director for chapter 1K and 44 adaptation, giving the power up a more dramatic approach like it's some god form as the Awakening OST is playing. Defeated Luffy is surrounded by the dark red background with blood, adding a quick montage of his previous defeats in the story against the likes of Magellan and Crocodile, which is a brilliant decision. Now Toshishira starts things off with his incredible art and fluid water-like animation. I will have to say that I'm not a big fan of the yellow effect, but it's not that big of a deal for me personally. I think the art and animation would have shined more without it. After Shira enters one of my favorite animators in the industry right now, French animator Vincent Chansard. His scene pretty much have everything you could ask for, incredible art, background animation, the three-dimensionality of his scenes with the incredible camera work and effects are something to witness. 
There's so much diversity in his impact frames, and as a One Piece fan he couldn't hold back as he foreshadows a certain thing with few frames. His hybrid Kato is the best in the series so far, just beyond perfect. Easily one of the best animated sequences in the last few months, maybe in the entire series. I'll have to say that the OST and the lack of voice acting didn't do his scene justice in the bit of Luffy running. So yeah, it's my only complaint here. Shira returns and I do think the hit lacked a bit of impact here, it's most likely a storyboard issue, but what comes next is truly wild. The very first time I read this scene in the manga, I wished for a certain animator to participate in its adaptation. And that's mainly because his effects are my favorite out of any other animator, without a doubt one of the best animated scenes in the franchise. Yet again, this isn't the first time Sugita does this. This uppercut was worthy of being the final hit so powerful to the point it's jaw dropping. I love the reference to Naokitate's legendary scene here. I think Koyama here had a good idea but the execution could have been better because the flashback exists to let Kaido eat his words when he disrespected Luffy but the Zoro flashback was so unnecessary, same with the Hyogoro one, it made things overstay their welcome and separate Sugita's scene. Also there was a clear lack of voice acting here, it's intentional, that's it. This is one of my favorite episodes in One Piece without a doubt. Thanks for watching, like and sub, and check out my video about Koyama as a director as I talk in detail more about his trademarks.